Today's life advice was presented by Modelo. Modelo, brewed for those with a fighting spirit. It's time for life advice. Life advice, the email. Life advice, rr at gmail.com. Okay. What's up, Kyle? Just want to check in and say hello. How's it? Doing well. You know, I feel like without Steve here, you don't really want to do too much kicking the can around in the beginning. Do I make you nervous when we're just talking about nothing? I know. I mean, you're not a nervous guy. Just I've noticed that ever since Steve left, we don't really bullshit in the beginning anymore. It's sort of like uh, just right down to business. You're kind of in and out. Pretty surgical. <laughs> Am I just reading it into this way too much again? Uh, yeah, it, it isn't. It isn't anything. Like if I felt like we had something, I like doing the stuff about nothing before this. I just do. I. But f- do you want to bullshit right now? Do you well, do anything I mean, on no, your chest? I, just a note for next. Just some notes for next time, I guess. Because now, now I'd feel like you're just trying to do me a favor. So maybe next time, Monday after a long weekend, maybe we'll have some stories. You know, I look. I love. I love sharing some stories. So, big we get story a long guy weekend? over here too. Uh, could be if we finish this uh, thing up early. This thing might be up super early on Friday. So, oh, uh, oh, I thought, yeah, I don't know. I lose track of holidays, so I, I don't. I was like, wait, we got one early December. I feel like we get a couple big ones coming up. I, I don't remember this as a kid, but I, uh, I lose track of all holidays because we just we work. You know, yeah, you know? we do. That's right. right, we do. We work. We're there for the people. <laughs> um, yeah, I, it isn't a Steve thing. It isn't a you thing. It's just, uh, it, but uh, feel free to throw on the text thread. Hey, I got a good story. I got a good, I got a, <laughs> I'll prep you. Got a good yarn for the audience and <laughs> All right. we, we can start there. If I have something on my mind, yeah, we'll, we'll do it. But I, yeah, I haven't been a tad more surgical lately. I appreciate that. I well, appreciate I'm glad we noticing. cleared that up. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, I noticed. I care, man. I've been pretty intense lately. I don't know what the fuck is going on. So maybe we are going to do an aside here a little bit. I don't know. Like if I do some sort of like this morning, I had my athletic green shout out, but I was like really fired up to get the day going and I was really excited to go to the gym instead of just drinking like a normal human being. I chug it and then I had shit all over my shirt and then I had to take the shirt off and immediately throw it in the laundry. And I went, why, why couldn't you just fucking drink that like a normal person? Then the other day when I went to the beach, I decided to kick off my sandals, but I had to make it some weird competition where I was going to do it, where I was going to kick him up and then catch it with the opposite hand. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And I have it down and then I did it one time and like, I think I pulled something. I was like, why can't you just fucking take your shoes off like a normal person? (laughs) And so I've had this real intense thing. And then I, I don't know. I was showering and it got way too intense in there where I like hit something because I was like, oh, I got to make this quick and I got to go. So I've been on this efficiency train, but mm-hmm. what I'm doing is turning into a psychopath. So enjoy. Have you been getting in the water enough? I feel like that'll slow you down. I mean, obviously, if the sandals are coming off, probably that, but are you getting in enough? I mean, that could be. I am getting it. in enough, um, right. but hit by two stingray bites last four times in the water. Nah, I don't like that at all. No, the first one I didn't even notice. The second one I did because I stepped on it. And when you step on a fish or stingray, it's just like, a you know, nobody likes with their feet going, oh, cool, this mushy fucking thing I just trampled. Um, and then when you get stung, you don't feel it right away. So their coordination is incredible. You know, just getting stomped on by whatever my mass compared to there is. I mean, and then being able to bite you, too. These aren't Steve Irwin stingrays, right? These are like, these aren't hospital stingrays. I looked it up because this one was bleeding and I could see the barb and I could feel it. And it's just Ugh. like somebody sticking you in the heel with a needle over and over and over again. And so it's annoying. Like yeah, but it's not like this writhing pain. It's just you're like, oh, this is going to suck. And I've had it happen before. And the sea urchin thing that I had cliff diving was 100 times worse than any stingray thing. Uh, again, a non-Steve Irwin stingray, apparently. But this uh, this one was a little annoying. And it just it kind of makes you be like, all right, I got to do the shuffle. You know, I got to get in the water because in the afternoons, the the tide is so low, which makes the waves loud, which I actually don't mind. Okay, there you go. All right. Uh, That was good. That was good enough for me. Thanks, man. Was it? Cool. All right. Awesome. Yeah. A little too intense lately. Not sure what it's about. Surgical, though. I do like that. All right. Let's get to it. Let's be efficient. This one is titled, Kyle, Getting the Group to Move Downtown. Ooh, this is in your wheelhouse. I like this one. Early 20s. 6'3", 195. No gym stats. Uh cardio, light lifting, had a spine injury. Okay. In his early 20s. He's 25 now. He lives in a small market NBA town and recently moved to the downtown area in the city. My friends and I all grew up in this city. And up until recently, I lived with a few friends in a house in the suburbs. I decided to move out of my old house to get a place to myself in the downtown area of the town. Uh, There weren't any huge issues with my old roommates other than some typical things. Dishes not being done. Fucking dishes. I told you. Right? (laughs) I told you. Do dishes have any remorse 
any remorse for the shit that they've caused with families and friends. <laughs> that would be great. Just the line of t-shirts. I blame the dishes. A dishes campaign. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Trash piling up, et cetera. I was a little over the roommate thing. I can afford to get my own spot. Nice. So I did. I still hang out with the old roommates and we're all still friends. My entire friend group still lives out east in the suburbs, which is about 25 minutes east by car. It's not terribly inconvenient to get there, but it's a mundane part of town. I feel like, by the way, as an aside, this has to be a Midwest town. I'm thinking Detroit. I'm thinking Cleveland. Um, I was wondering Milwaukee. Oklahoma City even. I don't know. Yeah, that would be a small market. But I feel like the middle territories in the Northeast, did you ever say a part of town was east or west, north or south of here? Um, I mean, kind Maybe. of because we're just like, you know, well, you're going west on going west on 44. It's like people would people would throw directions in there. But it New York be City like, doesn't count because it's just it's all named that way. You know yeah. I mean? And yeah, you correct. always kind of know when you're going north or south, east or west. I just feel like. This is this is just a statement. And it's going to end up being debated, so maybe I shouldn't even do it. Thanks in advance for your emails. I feel like more expansive areas of this country, uh, there, there's more of a, a tendency to describe directional. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> nah, it's just the theory. Well, let us know theory. what you guys think. We really, yeah, working theory. Hear. Don't actually don't. <laughs> I'm not that interested in it. I don't even know why I derailed this for it. Okay, so he's east. They're all east of the city. Even though a good amount of the group works downtown, they mostly just drive back after work. If they go out, they go to the same few spots in the suburbs that we've always gone to for basically 10 years now. 10 years? You're 25? Just <laughs> fucking wasted at the Applebee's? 15? More riblets. Okay. Um, and we see the same general crowd. I want to spread the gospel about how convenient it is to be able to walk to work, the bars, the cool areas, like park shops around my new spot. I am significantly happier not having to drive back and forth every day, and I really enjoy the downtown atmosphere. I don't want to sound smug while talking about how much better I think my new spot is than the suburbs where we grew up. But okay. you do. <laughs> but, <laughs> you definitely hey, do. I don't think he sounds smug, though, but I, I understand the concern. Everyone knows uh, someone who moved to a new area, starts something new, and suddenly acts better than everyone. I don't want to sound that way. I want the group to actually consider the positives of moving rather than coming off as a selfish friend. The cost of living isn't that much higher in my new spot since we do not live in a big or expensive city to begin with. Yeah, maybe this is OKC. Most people in the group are making more money than I am anyway. The crime is bad everywhere in this city, so sometimes I get some comments about how dangerous it can be. Uh, maybe it's not Oklahoma City. Though. Unless things have dramatically changed since the last time I was there. Um, the group in the suburbs actually experiences more crime out east than I do in the new gentrified downtown area. The area in the suburbs has break-ins and shootings close by, and I haven't had any issues since I've moved away. That sounds like rose-colored glasses, buddy. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You know, actually, Wait, the we, suburbs is where all the shit's going down. The city yeah. is great. <laughs> I've been way here more, for three way months. Way more shootings fine. by you guys at Dillard's. <laughs> Now I'm just trying to guess what this is the whole time. And if I say Detroit, then I don't know. Then people are going to get mad. So I'm not saying Detroit. Don't I'm do it. Wondering. I'm just wondering. Um, I think it would be a lot more fun for my group if they got out of the suburbs, especially in our mid-20s, and enjoyed the town a little bit. It's definitely selfish for me to try and convince everyone to pay a little higher rent and move to the area where I move. But I also think it's pretty lame to live around the same general area that we've always lived in. Go to the same spots and see generally the same crowd. We're all young and stuck in our hometown for the time being since everyone's job is unlikely to drastically change anytime soon. How do I convince at least a couple core guys that already work downtown to get a place nearby? Should I just accept that I may have to drive east every so often to catch up with the fellas? Thanks. All right. Well, I get it. Like you want your buddies to come do what you wanted to do. Um, and everybody has a different age where it's like, I don't want to do the roommate thing anymore. Maybe they still want to do the roommate thing. And maybe because they make, you said that you all kind of make in the same ballpark money wise. Well, you can make the same, but it doesn't mean that everybody wants to spend the same. So they may look at your situation going, you know, I actually don't want to spend the couple extra 500 bucks. Like you could, some people would process it. I know that I would when I were younger, like fucking 500 or more bucks or whatever. You're crazy, dude. Like, <laughs> no, I would go, I don't care. Eh, whatever. And then really? I would, no, no, then it would be tighter and I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't plan. I wouldn't budget. I wouldn't do those things. I would just be like, whatever. I mean, I was so single minded on the career stuff that nothing else mattered. I'd be like, oh, hey, if you break this, Leo, I don't care. Whatever. Um, you couldn't phase me. Unfazable. <laughs> Not a great planner, though, right? So 
just because you think these guys can afford it, they may be far more strict with their savings and what they may or may not want to do. I think you're making a good point. I think as far as trying to convince them, here's what I'd ask. If they wanted to do it, they'd probably already have done it, right? I mean, they must like living there. They must like being outside of the city. They must like the suburbs, maybe having a little, you know, piece of grass out back. You know, I haven't had a backyard really ever and sort of in West Hartford, but not really. Uh, And then everywhere else I've lived, you know, it's, it's, it's really close living by everybody else. And some people look at that and be like, I can't possibly I couldn't stand that. I could never do it. And I totally understand because I actually grew up like long driveways in some plot of land in the middle of nowhere. So they may hate the idea of not just having that little patch of grass, grass out back. Uh, and I would think if they were more open to it, like, it sounds like you want to convince them. So I don't know. I mean, Kyle, I got a couple other things, but do you think like, how would you handle this? If you were your buddies, you're like, what are you guys doing? Come live with rock and Kyle DTB. (laughs) Well, uh, what I would do is I think what I told our Monday guy was like, find your crew, find the guys who like you want to try to move in with. Like, I think if you're cool, like this might be this guy already like, has friends, though. The Monday guy didn't have friends. Right. Yes. Correct. But I guess the the the, the goal sorry, is the sorry same. to Monday guy. Yeah. <laughs> I hope it's going a lot better this week. Uh, basketball and mail should be starting up right about now. But um, Good point. I think I think that you basically it's going to work a lot easier if you're like, do this with me. Not like you guys should come do what I'm doing. It's like, you know, you have to decide like, are you into like, do you want these guys badly enough to like try to get an apartment with them other than just, cause they're not, I feel like they're going to look at you different. Like, dude, why are you like all up in my shit? Like you just want me closer. You're not like, uh, you know, if you're like, dude, I found this place. It's a three bedroom. It's awesome. We could even use the other bedroom as an office, whatever. Like, like, I don't think he wants to make roommates. It, I know. Huh. That's what I'm saying. I think it's going to be harder for you to just be like, dude, you guys don't see this. Like, look, like, I don't see how it's like they're already in the city. It's not like you're trying to like sell them on a city they've never been to. They spend like every workday in this city. Right. I just think it's going to be it's going to be harder without like you trying to actually make a plan because you're just sort of being like you're sort of being like the the house police. So I I, I just think it's not going to go over the way you want. I mean, maybe you could try to have somebody like spend. I mean. What what's the selling point? Like we can walk home from the bars instead of you know taking a, a a cab or sobering up before you drive home. Like like what's the selling point that like these guys that you want to be able to do with them other than just live live twenty minutes closer to you? I think it's just. Hard. I need to know the city because that would impact a lot. Like let's say let's forget the crime stuff that he's talking about. But if somebody said like, all right, this is Salt Lake, and I go, okay, the guy that doesn't want to live in Salt Lake is never living in Salt Lake. Okay, Oklahoma City's downtown again. It's been a really long time since I've been there, so I'm not caught up on anything i can't speak to it so i'm not going to um but i would say in the general thing of oklahoma like if you're a guy that's cool kind of being a little further away from the city you'll probably never want to live in the city so that's my big hesitation here is like i get why you want to do it but have you thought that maybe none of them want to ever do it like if you're sitting there trying to convince them and they're saying no eventually i would just give up now if you want to go ole miss cruton recruiting style why don't you have a little fet a little soiree invite over some of the local gals you pack that place <laughs> you pack that place with some that's pretty good 20 something i don't know if you have that in you if you have that kind of game maybe you get work you just friend zone it out and be like hey can you bring like a couple of your friends or whatever some of my guys are coming in and you throw a four to one ratio at these fucking dudes and you know they've got a couple old granddads going and they're gonna start saying i think i like the vibes i like what's <laughs> that's going phase on one. That's how do phase i one. get in how do I get into this? And then you have little pamphlets be like, oh, there's a two bedroom here. There's a studio here. That one's a little cheaper. Phase two is you're firing apartments.com all the time. Every, yeah. every day you're firing yeah. apartments.com. So what you need to do is throw the bender of all benders. And then you have a plan after that. It's this big group. And you know, you get those guys thinking a little bit differently, but my, my hesitation with you spending too much time on it, although I completely get what you're saying. And it'd be awesome if you had one or two extra buddies living in the city and that you're loving it. But if they already understand the concept of this and they've resisted it this long. So in the age that they're going, like they're, (laughs) if, if your situation was the equator, they're sailing north or south away from it as they get older. All right. This one's great. 
I fucking love this one. This is such a good choice, Kyle. Okay. I did read this one ahead of time because there was a lot to it. Ghosted by a professional athlete. Parentheses, probably not what you're thinking. Because when I hear ghosted by a professional athlete, I'm like, no way, he wasn't into you. Although we love those emails from, uh, you know, male or female. I don't know. I've been in this yeah. world enough that I'm thinking it's a dude who got a number and it's just overused it or something. <laughs> yeah. Now that I've been in this world for a, a number of years. Yeah, dudes, famous dudes will change up a number on you. All right, here we go. Um, this is... This is, this is going to be good. Hey guys, love the show. 5, 8, 160, 205, 10 times four bench press on the Smith machine. Side note, can I use the Smith machine to bench press? I know it's easier, but it also feels way more secure without a spotter. I know it's weak, so feel free to crush me on this. I'm not going to crush you, but I think you'll be stronger if you go lighter on the standard bench press and develop some of the muscles and stabilizing stuff. Uh, by doing that, where the Smith kind of keeps it pretty regimented. I'm not completely anti-Smith machine. Uh, I use it for incline because I feel like when I use just the standard incline and I go heavy, I feel like my shoulders are going to rip out of the sockets now. Um, so the Smith at least allows me that pushing motion at a different angle. But I would say to be stronger, go lighter on the flat bench. But I get your point. Kyle? Anything with that? Yeah, I heard you. Uh, no, I would defer to Ryan. I've, I've got my own thing, but I, you know, I haven't researched it enough. So, All right, that's the email. That was a good one. I told you guys. No, here's the point. All right, here's my dilemma. This past summer, we were traveling to Pensacola for my daughter's dance competition, and we had a layover in Atlanta. You guys taking this stuff seriously. While there, my 12-year-old son, who's an absolute football dork, noticed a guy, oh, that was very funny, holding a Cleveland Browns helmet waiting at the same gate as us. He asked me if I knew who it was, and I said no. But he didn't really care about that. He asked me if I could uh, ask for a photo. I said, sure. But I could tell that he, my son, was a little bit nervous. After a minute or two, though, he worked up the courage to go to talk to the guy. Sure enough, the guy was super nice and glad they took the picture with him. You don't need to mention this part. Um, but we looked him up to see who it was. Okay, all right. So the guy plays for the Browns. Got it. And it all checks out. All right, a month later, at the end of July, I thought I'd make an awesome gift if I could somehow get this guy to sign the photo they took together and surprise my son with it for Christmas. I found him on Instagram and reached out to ask if I could send him a copy for him to sign and send back. And again, he agreed, no problem. He gave me the address of the facility, told me to send it there. I spent $30 on shipping the photo both ways, included a prepaid envelope with our address already on it to make it as easy as possible for him. All he had to do was open it, sign the photo, and drop it back in the mail. It took a few weeks for him to respond, saying he received it, but he apologized and said he'd been busy with training camp, which was totally understandable. Yeah, I, th I think that's pretty understandable. He assured me that he received it, though, and was planning on dropping it back in the mail the next day. This was on August 31st, and I still haven't heard from him since. Okay, so we're, we're three months from the last correspondence. Since I had the tracking information, I could see that he hadn't dropped the envelope back off yet, so I was getting anxious, but I didn't want to bug him about it too much. I checked in every couple of weeks with a quick IG message asking if he had the chance to drop it off yet, but no response. Um, let me read that sentence again because it's important. I checked in every couple of weeks with a quick IG message asking if he had had a chance to drop it off yet, but no response. Every couple of weeks. I figured he's probably too busy with the season going on, so I decided to give it a rest until their bye week when maybe you'd have a free minute. <laughs> so at the beginning of November, I told him I was happy to send another copy if I needed to, but I still haven't gotten a single response from him. So what do I do now? I know it's not the end of the world, but I really got my hopes up once he agreed to do it, and now I can't stop thinking about it. I would stop thinking about it <laughs> is my first piece of advice, man. Stop thinking about it. I would honestly just prefer if he told me to fuck off so I could put the idea to rest. But the lack of response or explanation as to what changed is what's bothering me the most. My son looks for him every time the Browns are on TV, and he's become a huge fan. He was talking about how great he is after um, we're making this a little too specific, so uh, we'll leave out that detail. But the son is a big fan. My son doesn't know I've been working on this, so I smile at his enthusiasm, but it also bums me out knowing this guy isn't exactly coming through for him. I know the odds of this working out for me are slim to none, but I'm not giving up unless you tell me to. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> do I just spend another $30 on shipping and send another copy hoping he sends it back at this time? Is there a better way for me to try to get a hold without being completely annoying? 
again, it's not that important in the grand scheme of things, but I know it would mean the world to my son. I can just imagine the smile he'd have opening that gift on Christmas. I'm just a desperate dad trying to go, do a cool thing for my son. I'd really appreciate any advice you have. Also, I've attached the photo and the screenshots of our conversation. Uh, you guys are the best. All right, I'm not going to read all the screenshots and all the, the correspondence because the, the player does, in fact, respond to the DMs and say, cool, and he gives them the address and he well, there's a there's a no problem boss in there there's a no problem arm flex like yeah there's every the emailer here the father has every right to believe that this was actually going to work right. out what is my number one rule about young males okay this is going to sound like a scott galloway thing but it isn't the number one thing that young males suck at is mailing things I don't know if there's anything that 20 year old males are worse at than mailing something. I'm, I'm like, when I do it now and I send a package home or to somebody or return something, I'm like blown away. And then I'll be like, man, I need to take a day off. Like that's getting the water. <laughs> that yeah. <was> crazy. <laughs> like I need to, I need to relax the rest of the day. Maybe take a fucking nap. I went to the post office. Men are terrible at it. They're bad at it. I can't imagine throw into that mix instead of just average 20 something male throw in pro athlete 20 something <laughs> male those guys don't do shit so back to you what you're doing here is awesome you are clearly a very organized person you're an awesome dad and you're trying to do something awesome for your son and it's not the cost it's not any of those things you're like i'm able to pull off something really unique that kind of tells the full story you know we were like bringing it back full circle here this is this six month thing and your son the imagine the idea of him opening up this picture that he took with this guy in the airport now he's been obsessed with him because a young kid you're still in this age where he doesn't hate you yet and it's fucking in an awesome age and he's aware of everything and everything's great um, and this was going to be an awesome gift. So you're driven by all of this. But what I will tell you is that you probably, cause I can tell how organized you are self addressed stamped envelope. That's a whole nother step. Like that's another level that some people don't even get to. Right. It's Kyle like a wedding. Have, it's like a wedding invite. Yeah. That's Kyle. Have, have you ever sent a self addressed stamped envelope to get something back in your life? Definitely not. We were going to do it for the wedding invitations. I was like, I can't, I don't want to do it. Uh, well, they'll have to figure it out online. So, okay. I didn't want, I didn't want to double mail stuff. So yeah, I left a nice pan at a friend's house in Lake forest this summer. No, it was in May. He was like, well, just send, I go, I'll send a self, self address. First of all, he hasn't mailed me the pen, which, <laughs> which would have been super easy. easy, which would have <laughs> been easy. I was like, I'll send you a self address like UPS envelope thing. I'll just put it in there and I'll send it, just drop it in. Cause it's a pen. I don't want to lose it. And he was like, no problem. Guess who hasn't even done that. And it's been <laughs> since May It's me. All right. So there's that part of it. Now, I understand what you're saying is that he told you he would do it. And I'm telling you, he thought he was going to do it. He didn't lie to you. He didn't think I'm going to fuck this dad over and tell him I'm going to sign this picture. It's just that he doesn't care. He doesn't care. He's a young athlete trying to make his way. And I can tell how organized you are because then you were like, I hit him up knowing like, all right, I looked for the bye week and thought, like, you're a super organized person dealing with your ultimate kryptonite, somebody <laughs> that is yes. the opposite of you. <laughs> like, the super organized cannot fucking fathom the brain of the unorganized. You just feel like, why can't you just do this? It's like, no, man, that's not how I operate. <laughs> I know it'd be super easy. I know it'd be awesome. It's a nice thing to do. I'm not malicious. I just don't have the same operating system <laughs> that you Word. do. Where right? I walk past that oven mitt every day. I'm and not guess, picking it up. And guess who wins every confrontation? The unorganized. <laughs> <laughs> the organized have been doing, they've been planning. They've been trying for years to counteract all the unorganized moves. They can't do anything with it. They're unbeatable. <laughs> oh, shit. So. <laughs> all I'm telling you is I'd let it go. I'd let it go. The only move, and you did bring it up, is you try one more time, right? You try one more time, you send another envelope, another picture, you map it all out, and you try to guilt them into it and go one more time. You're like, hey, I sent another picture. I know this is annoying. This is not important to you. Sympathize with him. You're a young guy making his way in this world, the crazy NFL, but I sent it one more time. And if you could do it, it would mean the world to me. And if he blows you off again, stop 
DMing him. I think you nailed all the emotional parts of this, so I'm going to leave it alone. I think that was great. That was like a great monologue. I hope somebody uh, puts that somewhere isolated. But I, I'm I'm just coming in with solutions, right? You're not going to like them all, but they're not here. They're not here I love for you it. to like them all. They're just solutions. Turn on my a, mic. A, fake it. Just fake it. That's one solution. We're going to go. <laughs> all right, gonna go, turn the mic go back from, off. We're going to go from bad to good. Forgery. Right? A, a is just fake it. Um, you've got, you can make as many copies of this thing as you want and you can try to, you can try to, to fake it. Who's going to know? He's never going to sell it. And if the kid does try to sell it, well, he never should have got it in the first place. So really nobody's going to know. You could do that. You probably wouldn't feel great about it Two, I mean, check his Instagram. A lot of these guys have, um, business managers or something, you know, it's like for business contact this guy. And I think those guys have to read most things that, you know, that's part of the job is reading emails that even, you know, aren't going to go anywhere. Right. So you could just, you could just like, you know, attach the screenshots and be like, listen, I've got this thing. I've, you know, I, I've, I've exhausted all the other things. I know this isn't necessarily a business thing, but I was just hoping, cause I mean, you need kind of a manager to, to get some of this shit done sometimes, because that's what managers are for. Athletes have like important shit on their minds and then they have to be reminded about less important shit that they've committed to. So like maybe, maybe there's a way you can get in touch with that guy. Um, so a lot of times it'll say for business inquiries, contact this or whatever, or, you know, if you're organized enough, maybe there's a way you can research to find out who is who who his manager is if it's not uh, in his social media or whatever. Um, those are my pretty much my only two. I mean, your your last one is just to spend another forty bucks and ship it out there and hopefully it it, it works. But yeah, I mean, I think the the two things that you'll probably see better results from is either just faking it or um or getting the picture or just buy you know buy an autograph online that's not that picture and then he'll also have the picture that he took with him that day. I know that you, the the best way would be to have him sign the picture that they took together, but you could also just buy an, an autograph online for probably not that much. Yeah, I, I don't think I, I get what you're saying. You went forgery to buy something that's not the picture. Um, this jersey wouldn't be expensive if you wanted to do something like that, but that's not the point. He's been on this quest. He feels like this guy entered into some sort of contract where he said he would do it. Totally. And by the way, he's mailing it to the facility. So all the guy has to do is sign it and hand it back to somebody who works for the team. And then that guy drops it off, right? Like this isn't even like the guy actually has to go to the post office. But my, but what I'm telling you is what you've done is I've seen the, the DMs that have gone like that aren't being responded to is now you've entered this category for this dude where he has all these people reaching out to him all the time. And even though he said he would do this, he's just going like, oh, what the fuck, this guy again. You've probably crossed over into that where it yeah. was like, oh, well, wow, this fucking guy keeps DMing me or like, I don't even know where that picture is anymore or any of that kind of stuff. So yeah, I think you could send it all over again and say, hey, look, different angle. I know I've been bugging you. I know this is not important to you. It would mean everything for my kid. I sent another. It's going to be there Thursday. If you could find a way to just sign it and hand it to an assistant, go for it. But I'm just, even though you're right, you haven't done anything. Well, you've, you've DM'd him a lot, all right? But I know why you have. But like, look, this is my old Dirk Bentley thing. I was having a birthday party. He was playing a show that night. I had like 10 people. I had a limo. I had this whole thing set up. And... I hit up Dirks being like, hey, man, um, I got like 10. Is that good for backstage and the whole deal? And he was like, yeah, don't worry about it. And that was like a month out. And he's playing different cities every night. Right. And I I hit him up like a week out. And this again, is somebody I've known since I was 18. So even though we're not besties, I felt like there was a certain level. And the fact that I was, I kind of, again, I'm not. I'd like to think that my career has at least allowed me a little grace with like Rosillo understands some of this shit. And this isn't the highlight of your year either. It's not like, you know, he's like, he's also got shit going on too, which helps. Yeah. Like I have. Yeah. But again, I'm not pretending to be like a country star where I, Hey man, I get it, dude. Fucking you see the emails (laughs) we get for the show. Uh, But with Dirks, I, I hit him up again, like a week out and going, just double checking. You know, because I had all the shit rented, the whole deal. And then there was a follow up day of the show being like, dude, are we good? And it it didn't go over well. And it didn't go over well because I'm like, I wasn't thinking about him. I was thinking about myself. 
this guy every day is flying to, you know, bus ride, not flying, bus ride to all these places. He probably can't think of, like, can't keep track of what the hell's going on. Doesn't know where he's going to be in two nights. You know what I mean? Like, you're just going over and over and over on this grind. And because I'm thinking like, well, shit, I'm just going to buy 10 tickets if I don't hear from him. So I was like, I'll hit him up one more time. And, uh, you know, in that moment, I think he was like, Rosillo's being super fucking annoying. I didn't think I was being annoying because I was on the hook for all of these people. And I didn't care about buying the tickets. I just had to make sure that we were all because a limo ride around Hartford without a concert. Isn't that great of a time? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, know, I know that blows people's minds, but. I would, uh, I would give, I'd be willing to, I'd take, yeah, take another swing at it, what we've already talked about. But if you don't hear back from him, let it go, let it go. Cause now when he sees your name and he sees it, that it's another DM, even though you're right. And he fucked you up here by not sending it out. He's thinking like, oh, this guy again, because he has so much other shit going on. And that's not your, it's, it's not your fault, but in his eyes, it is. Yeah. You, you made a good point where I like, you may have crossed over into the group of guys I'm ignoring. And not because I love to ignore people. It's just because there's way too many. Yeah. Some people have to be in this bucket. And maybe you got put in that bucket because maybe your thing got misplaced or whatever. So, you know, maybe by sending that thing, you jump back into the other bucket because you're, you know, there's a physical thing that'll be put in front of him. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I think as things currently stand, it's nothing's going to happen unless you take some sort of action. But, you know, I, I would say if it doesn't work, there's always forgery. It wouldn't really be a... I don't think it'd be a huge, I don't even think that's a crime if you don't try to sell it. It'd be like the Raven, though. You're going to be walking past it. <laughs> you get older. Yeah, well, <clears throat> for just a couple of years of kids' happiness, like you said, soon the kid's not even going to like you anyway for a couple of years. He'll come back, right? This isn't how it works. <laughs> Thank you to Kyle. And I think that's pretty much it, right? Is there anybody else I'm supposed to thank? I probably would have heard about it from now. From somebody, yeah, somebody would have sent me a memo. Um, all right, well, cool, man. Enjoy your weekend, enjoy your conference championship games. We're back on Monday. Prime Resolve Podcast. Please subscribe, bring your Spotify. Mm-hmm.